Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the afternoon's, uh, well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Morning Coffees with James. I'm James, and this is my morning coffee show, if you try to visually try to see me the way I am right about now. Um, but, you know, you're going to get the high pres angle right now. I don't really give a damn. Um, this day has just been absolute dog shit now, and he, uh, well, let me just put it this way, um, the line set that we had, it was, <sighs> let me, let me, the line set we, what we had was the wrong line set, we put it up and now we're going to bring it back down again and all this shit, honestly, I'm not upset about it, you know, my dad, who is running the business, is, you know, we just lost another fucking day and I'm losing money and blah, 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 and just like, it happens. It fucking happens. And how come, the, the question is, how come the top one connected? How come the top one fucking connected? And I'm going to sound cynical when I say this, but my dad needs to fucking retire. I mean, this whole bullshit, well, I'm just going to work until I die thing. It's like not meant for everybody. Those guys who like were in their like pushing 70 and shit like that, they just, they didn't want to fucking stop doing it because their bodies were just so function to do it. You know what I mean? Like. And the fact that that, that that was their life. That was their life, and that was going to be the end of it. Like, they didn't have anything else. Yeah, I know how you feel, man. I know how you feel. I just saw a dude just take off his sunglasses and just rip the fucking mask off. And I'm like, honestly, I'm done with fucking masks. I hate masks. I hate wearing a fucking mask. I, you know what? It's not, you know what? No, I really, I, I highly fucking doubt it. It's like not, don't give me this bullshit. It's like, well, in Japan, they do it. Well, in Japan, when you're sick you do it, well, you don't know, it's like, I'm just so fucking done with everybody's bullshit, I'm just so done with the left, I'm just so done with the right, I'm just so done with everybody's bullshit, and especially this COVID thing, they're trying to shut down America to get after Trump, and if you don't believe me on that one, if you think I'm full of shit, then you need to open your fucking eyes, because the Democrats in this fucking country will do anything to get rid of Trump and regain their power. Both political sides. All these... Oh, shut the fuck up. Dude. By Don. It's like, yeah, by Don. Hello, fucking communism. And a man who's basically, you know, senile. He's a senile... It's a, I'm sorry, but Joe Biden... You know, if you're voting for George, Joe Biden, you're please re- reconsider and vote for Donald Trump because at least with Joe Biden... You know, with, at least with Joe Biden, you're going to get this old man who's, like, mentally not there. And he's just a puppet for Camila Harris so they can just shove him in. And by the way, Camila Harris is a fucking authoritarian bitch. I'm sorry, but all these authoritarian bitches and fucking cunts need to go. I'm sorry, but you know what? You're, the only cure for authoritarianism is a 45 to the brain. And I know that sounds like, you're promoting hate and violence. And it's like, well, if I were to say I was a Democrat, you'd be okay with it. If I was threatening Trump 24-7, you'd be okay with it. But never mind about that. I'm not talking about that. It's just, you know, I'm just so fucking done. I had to get the political thing off my chest because I have been not there. I have been doing this show for a while because just the way my workout schedule is... It's been absolute dog shit, so, yeah. So, if right now, I'm just trying to get things in order and just trying to get things in the correct, you know, pattern of my life right about now. You know, just trying to figure out what I got to do. And I think the biggest thing I have to do is stop consuming marijuana. I know, I know I keep saying that out loud, but I think, I think it's time I just took a 30-day hiatus again. Like a 30-day cleansing, like Joe Rogan's, you know, Sober October, but starting it for four months. And just really see where I might, like, where I want to go with my life. You know, I like doing this. This, like, you know, I will say this, though. I like doing the morning coffee show. I like doing some stuff on YouTube. May, I'm, I'm gone, I have to start doing some shit on BitChute. But then again, like, YouTube is so user-friendly, it's not even funny. BitChute's getting there, but it's like a slow fucking process. And the fact that BitChute won't censor you for, you said the F word, and you're going to get demonetized. It's like, motherfucker, I ain't making any money. All right? 
and you're upset with Joe Rogan, and then they don't go after other guys for this because of I feel like it's agendas and the fact that they're making money. You know, it's the same thing with uh, Markiplier. Markiplier, even Markiplier, speaking out about this, he's like, "Well, I'm Markiplier, and uh, yeah, I just don't really like this whole demonetization thing and how YouTube." I wish he would just come out and just be like, "Yeah, YouTube's full of shit." My name is Markiplier. My Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier, and uh, YouTube is full of shit. I'll tell you that much. Am I right, Jacksepticeye? Oh, yes, you are right, my laddie. Top of the morning to you. I'm Jacksepticeye. And to tell you that YouTube's full of shit, they went after my friend PewDiePie. I'm dead serious about this. Um, yeah, this is what happens when you don't fucking do your show for a while, and there's so much shit going on. There are so many things going on. Um, right about now, and there's a lot of things I want to talk about. Hopefully, I can get them done in this uh, 30 minute essay. Uh, but no, the thing that bothers me the most about the uh, about the presidential, you know, debate, like the presidential thing, is just like the way things are going in this country. It's like the fact that, you know, yeah, my oh, okay, I gotta scratch myself. That was a weird thing. Um, yeah, you're getting raw, unfiltered. Okay, I've been working. This my, my, you know what, to rich and whatever. And I really do. I'm, I'm really not excited about what's going to happen for the years to come because it, like I'm hoping you know Donald Trump wins. Joe Biden. I'm sorry, but I don't like. I don't understand why you want to vote for Joe Biden. I mean, the dude literally is like he is brain death. He is brain death. I mean, the dude. Can he put together a coherent sentence? Even I can't, but you know what? At least I'm aware of it. I mean, and again, it's just so fucking done with these fucking people, and they're fucking like, you know, we win at all cost attitudes. Like, granted, I don't mind a win at all cost attitude, but like, to look at it from this perspective, like, in a sense, it's like not even a good win. It's just basically you're just looking for it for the win. Like, we won! Okay, now what? It's the same problem with the supervillain. He wants to defeat the bad guy. He wants to win the day. But what is he going to do afterwards? And then you get this post-homicidal, you know, mortem depression, which is not, you know, fun for anybody. Trust me. I mean, you understand the morals of supervillains. It's like, that's what their whole thing is. It's like, all they want is to rule the world. And, you know, what are they going to do afterwards? It, you know, it's that same, you know, stick and show bullshit. You know what I mean? It's, it, it just makes me laugh to no fucking end. And the fact that, you like, you know, Joe Biden, like, you know, was saying all this shit, you know, not just the corn pop story, but the fact that, you know, you know, the cocaine test, oh, uh, about cocaine, and it's like, or the fact that, like, telling black people that if you do not vote for him, then you're not black. As a black person, if I was a black person, I'd be so fucking angry at Joe Biden. I'm like, what the fuck you say, you fucking old white dude? What the fuck did you just say? I ain't black? Like, motherfucker. Sorry, I don't mean to speak ghetto, but... You know, but again, it's this whole cult. It's, it's this entire fucking cult of the left. It's like... They just want to win. They just want to, like... And it's also, like... I don't know. I don't want to go on too much on political politics. But then again, I do want to talk about art and entertainment because it all reflects, too. Because this is the same group that will start to, like, normalize things that should not be normalized. Like... And granted, I know people out there are going, oh, you're a homophobe, or you're a xenophobe, or you're a thisophobe. Well, No. I don't mind people being gay. I don't mind people being bisexual. I don't mean mind people having a sexual identity they relate to. But the problem is, is that don't teach kids at that a younger, a young at an age, like blatantly what a sexuality is. I mean, like kids, kids are trying to figure out the world when they get young. Like when they're at like you know from two to like. 13, they're figuring out stuff. They're figuring out they can't do the things that they do, and then the things they can, they can do. You know what I mean? It's like, they're trying their best to understand the world. 
And that's what it really just comes down to. Like, they're just trying their best to understand, like, what is going on in my society? What's going on here? What is, why is this guy doing this? Why is this person that not good? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, they're still figuring things out. And, like, granted, I grew up on, like, I grew up on television, like most of my generation and everybody else before me. But at least our shows were, like, willing to be like, okay, we blatantly can't talk about homosexuality. So let's talk about this in a more comfortable sense where it's not, we're not talking about it. So, and again, I'm not a big fan of censorship and I know people are freaked out because if, like, there's more Republicans, we're going to get the religious right. And trust me, I don't want to deal with the religious fucking right either. I mean... Between, between the regressive left and the religious right, uh, I, I'd rather deal with the regressive left because at least, at least they're not using, like, religious backgrounds to, like, tell me what I should do and what I should think. And granted, like, if you want to teach kids about, you know, the differences of stuff and, oh, this and that and, you know, about why this person likes the same person or this person, like, you know... It's sugar-coated. When you, when you are dealing with kids' entertainment, you really do have to step around it. You do have to sugarcoat it because you're dealing with a sensitive subject. You know, especially when it's like... There's also, like, even death. You know, when kids' shows dealt with death, it was a very sensitive subject because, you know... How do you deal with somebody dying? <laughs> how do you deal with somebody going away or passing away? How do you deal with, you know, parents getting divorced? How do you deal with, you know, how do you deal with uh, somebody different to you? How do you deal with a bully? How do you, like, all that stuff. Like, Mr. Rogers was a great example of that. And he was more calm. He was very focused and very calm about it. He wasn't very blunt being like, well, this is a gay person. This, this person likes, you know... This person like, likes having sex with men. Like, no. They would not be as blunt with that. And as I see it today with television, like, you know, the whole, what was that, Adventure Time thing? If I was a kid, like, I feel like most of these kids' shows today are not written for adults. They're written for... They're written for adults with kids in mind. Like, it's a weird thing to say, but, like, granted, you could say, like, oh, well, most of the adult jokes were for kids for grown-ups, like, yes, but, like, take, for instance, Ran and Stimpy, ton of adult jokes in the original show, I'm not, I'm not including uh, Adult Beach Party, whatever the fuck that was, because it's, granted, like, tiptoeing around the censors is a funnier way of doing things than just blatantly just smacking you over the head with a, with a, with an adult joke. Like, for example, uh, for example, uh, you know, in Ren and Stimpy, like, I'm pretty enough, speaking about John Kay, he did a show called Mighty Mouse that was produced by Ralph, Ralph Bashke, and there was a, uh, there was a controversy about the whole thing in one of the episodes where, uh, Mighty Mouse takes a powdered flower and sniffs it through his nose, like, the episode is basically Mighty Mouse trying to get his girlfriend back and losing the girlfriend to, uh, Kirk Douglas in the sense. And, basically, you know, nobody talked about how Kirk Douglas and Mighty Mouse's girlfriend got blown up in a fucking car, but, you know, the snorting of a flower is the bad thing. But the thing that bothers me, like, again, most of those kids' shows back in the day were, like, they were very, like, I have to give them respect. They were very sugarcoating on how to do it. Like, oh, like, even as an adult, when you watch it, you're like, oh, okay. Like, this is not plainly teaching kids about transvestite, but teaching kids that, yes, when you grow up in life, there's going to be people out there who are absolutely, like, not of the norm. So they dress up. They dress up in a skirt, or they like dressing up in women's clothing, or they like to, you know, run around nude, or they like to, you know, 
eat lima beans. That was a great story, by the way. There was a really great little children's book about a girl who ate lima beans, and she basically neglected herself from eating lima beans, so she started to, like, morph about what, what people were basically just telling her what she should do and what she should... And she become, started to become, like, everything that everybody was telling her to be. And this one old lady comes up to her and is like, do you like lima beans? And she goes, yes. And then she eats lima beans and she's good. Um, I like stories like that. But the thing that's the thing I love about children's, like, television probably Like, when you write good television... Like, when the difference between good television, kids' television programming and bad... Uh, the difference is, is like how you treat the audience. And I'm not talking about the kid audience. I'm talking about the adult audience as well. Like, if you think about it, kids are learning how to be adults and like they're getting messages from like adults all the time, not just through television, but through like the interactions of the world they're in. So, take for instance, you know, again, Nick, the, the shows you watch on that, because I grew up on Nickelodeon. I didn't really wa- grow up on Cartoon Network, but. I did, well, excuse me, that's a bold-faced lie. When I got older, I started watching Cartoon Network. And, by the way, Cartoon Network is not bad. I like Cartoon Network. But the, the difference is, is that Nickelodeon had some shows and had some deep moments. Had some deep fucking moments with you. So, like, Rocco's Modern Life is an example. I use Rocco's Modern Life because Rocco kind of, like, did teeter on teasing the censors, along with, like, Ren and Stimpy, but I feel like Ren and Stimpy was just there for, like, shock value at times, and a great cartoon, nonetheless, but, I don't know, then again, it holds no candle to Hey Arnold or Doug or any of that shit, but, I am gonna say this, though, uh, again, and it goes, you know, to, like, how you teach kids and all this stuff, it's like, I th- and again, the LGBTQ representation, it's like, it, it's kind of blunt, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not, oh shit, I don't want to be in this lane, I don't want to be in this lane, I don't want to be in this lane, just move up, move fucking faster, Whoop. come on now, so yeah, it's, it just, Don't fuck with me. Um, I'm sorry, the truck was making weird noises again. Um, no, the thing that bothers me about this whole, you know, Adult Swim thing, and, and also about, about children's programming now, and especially, or pretty like comedy shows nowadays, they, and again, I talk about edgelords and stuff like that, but I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this, but, you know, but today's cartoons are just too. And especially for adults and kids, are too blunt over the head about the message they're sending. It's like, these are kids still trying to figure out who they are or what the world's about. And, you know, they're doing, and and it's a slow process. And you really shouldn't, as an adult, and I mean this too. Like, I know I have no kids, but I have a nephew. So it's like, it's hard. Like, I'm not the best parental. Excuse me. I need to drink some water. I'm not the best parental guidance on this. And I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. It's... When you do... It's weird, but... You know, I feel like most... Like, again, like... Most of these people who are trying to, like... I don't think they're trying to normalize it. I think they are, like, unintentionally normalizing it. It's like, well, it's like... Or better yet, like... It's just, just, they're, they're just, like, excuse me, there, there's some things you just don't need to normalize. There's some things that you, that should just be taboo because of, like, the situation at hand. Like, for example, uh, there's a new show out on, uh, and this should give you a warning what the title's about. Um, there's a show on Netflix, which is not a surprise because Netflix has had a track record of this, but there's a show on Netflix called Cutie. And it's about an 11, 11 year old black French girl who is obsessed with dance uh, of the, let's just say, adult 
version, like it, it, not 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 the, not the way I think. Let me put it this way: she's uh, the you know she wants to join this dance group that does twerking. So basically, you know, it's 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 Little Miss Pageant thing all over again. But now the left is like, it, it's a French documentary, and it's in. Basically, the synopsis of it is, you know, this young French girl is basically trying to, you know, defy her cursed conservative family. And they mention conservative. Like, you know, it, maybe it's, you know, what's a matter of just being like, okay, I don't find this, you know, you're young, you're an 11 year old girl, and you're going to dance with this, like, and you want to twerk for people? It's like, no, honey, no. What you're doing right now is bad. Like, wait a while. Learn how to get proper dance, and then when you get older, yeah, just... You do whatever you want. But seriously, I, I mean, this is like... They're normalizing this... I, I, They're normalizing this kind of behavior. And I don't want to say it out loud because I don't want to get demonetized or flagged or, you know, hidden by the algorithm because I want to get my voice out there. I'm tired of fucking telling everybody, oh, don't put that up, don't put that out, no, I'm talking about shit, god damn it, and I swear, I swear like a, like a god dang sailor, and not like Pop, not like Popeye the Sailor Man either, not like Popeye the Sailor Man, but you know what I mean, it's, it sickens me, and it's, it's and like, I'm not surprised it's from Netflix either, Netflix has had this track record of you know, showing the most horrific, not even a horrific, but shows that, like, question, you know, this narrative in the sense, not narrative, but, like, have questioned, you know, I'm going to check something here real quick, I just got to keep going forward, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, pretend like I'm going to fucking, no, no. But it, 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 it just alerts me in a sense because it's like I have a nephew. He's very young and impressionable. I mean, he just lost his dad. I know I'm bringing that up, but you know what? It's the truth. It's the God honest truth, and it's not that simple. I mean, you know, most of these kids are. They want to look up the heroes. They want to look up the idol. Like, not the reason why they look up the kids like that or look up the fucking, you know somebody of that importance, it's like, it's because they need somebody to, like, model their life off of, okay, this guy eats, he's like, eats healthy and exercises, we should be like him, you know, this guy does this or this or this, it's, when you start to, like, when you really start to, like, uh, you know, normalize bad behavior like that, that's when I start to get concerned, because it's like, it's, to me, it's not about, well, he's, you know, oh, well, we gotta, we gotta make progression, and we can't just alienate people, and it's like, no, 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 this is not about alienating people, this is not about, you know, this is not about alienating people, this is not about discrimination, this is not about what you think you, you should, you're, what you're, like, you know, you, your idea of progress and healing is, there are some things that are just taboo and should not be talked about with kids. If, in fact, if you really like, and granted, they were warning about kids about these kind of people back in the day, like strangers that want to harm you in certain ways. It's like that to me is like that is a big warning flag right there. That is the biggest warning flag right there when they start to say, "Oh no, never mind." Well, it's and again, I'm going to point to other shows like the new Powerpuff Girls show. There is a character on the show that is a. I, I don't want to say romantic uh, interest, but a it seems like it. And the dude looks like the fu- looks like the creator of the show, like one of the showrunners. And uh, honestly, I'm just I'm shocked by that. Like, and especially the way Cartoon Network is doing their shows, and especially the way like kids animation nowadays is like running. It's like it's sickening. Like, you know, they act like you know they're entitled and. Like the, the Cal Art students, let me put it that way. You see a lot of this, like, you know, shows used to be very diverse back in the day, like different cartoon styles and stuff like that. But now you see this, like, same style going on everywhere Cal Art style, Cal Art style. 
And I know, I there's people out there who are professional artists who are like, well, they've been doing it before. Well, that's different. I, I'm going to be honest with you, it's completely different. And the fact that, like, the same kind of... Like, for the example that we're going to use is, like, the Jackie Chan Adventure Show compared to the, the Batman show. Not the, not the animated series, but the, the show that called itself The Batman. Um... It really, like, you know, yeah, it was the same kind of art style, but the difference is, is that between that and this, the, you know, they basically were not trying to copy off of it. There we, I think it was the same guy doing the same art style, but to me, it's... I don't know how to put it. I really don't. I'm just so... It bugs me in no sense. It really does bug me to no sense when it comes to, like, again, what kids watch. And I know it's like, well, it's not meant for you. I keep hearing that argument. It's not meant for me. Well, you know what? Would you feed your kids candy? Would you feed your kids nothing but nonstop sugary, overly saturated sweets and sugars and stuff like that? Would you? No. You would try to feed them vegetables. And would you try to make them put some a little bit of cheese and flavor on that so they digest it better so they can consume it better yes you would so yeah look and that's how i look at today's cartoons and today's programming for kids and stuff like that it's like there's a few good vegetable shows that are just covered in you know wholesome cheese but there are some other shows that are just pure sugar and it's just rotting their brains and it's rotting like rotting their souls as well like the new Thundercats show is a great example of that. You know, where you have, you know, instead of just teach, like the original show, and I'm going to just praise the original show for doing this. The original show, uh, I praise it because watching the documentary, you know, Thundercats Ho, Roar, Thundercats Ho, um, the original show was not a, you know, just a blank. G.I. Joe kind of ripoff. It was, you know, there was some morals to be taught. There was a lot of things to be taught on that show. Like, it wasn't just about, you know, we got to fight a bad guy who's a mummy. No, it was like teaching kids about life and life lessons and morals and all that. They, they had a child psychologist helping to write the show. So don't give me this bullshit that, you know, it, 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 it's not meant for you know, kids, you know, sorry, I'm taking it, I'm fucking taking it, I don't care, I have to get going, I have a dad who, all right, never mind, but anyhow, I will talk more about this, there will be a part two, um, give me a second, I'll be right back, and so we can do more talking to the camera, and by the way, Megan, thank you, hope you're watching this on YouTube. So give me a second.